Now in this video, we'll talk about EHRP stops. Now EHRP stops is totally different from the OSPF stops here. Now the main reason of using the EHRP stops is to limit the number of queries on the end locations, which is more applicable in hub and spoke topology. So let's go back to some example, like in the previous videos, we have seen what is stuck in active state. Now stuck in active state is a state where the router lost its successor and there is no feasible successor. And these two roads are not feasible successor because it is not satisfying the feasibility condition. The router is going to send out a query messages and then expecting a reply about the destination like F, how to reach to F. But here let's take an example. My router A is also connecting to some, some of the branch offices, which are my end locations. And it is going to send out a query to these neighbors as well. And these are the end locations which are totally dependent on A to figure out how to reach to other networks. Now in this scenario, normally what happens is as per the default second active state, the neighbor is, uh, the router is going to expect a reply from each and every neighbor and it's going to wait for maximum of three minutes and then after that it is going to reset the neighbors. Now this process is called stuck in active state but it's something add some more extra overhead on the EHRP routers to process these query and reply messages. Now what is the solution? What we can do is we can limit these number of query and query and reply messages by configuring the end locations as a stub. Now I can just simply go to this each and every router and I can configure that as a stub. So once you configure this specific router as a stub, they are not queried, which means the stub routers will not be sent any query messages and they will not be asked because once you configure the stub, it's going to add some information inside the EHRP update and it's going to inform to the main branch office saying that I'm a stub router, please don't send me any query messages. Now this way we can minimize, uh, minimize the number of query messages on the end locations. But again, when you are doing the configuration of the stub, you need to ensure that you are not going to do it on the remaining routers if that is a transit router. So we need to ensure that we are not configuring on the transit router. We are going to do it on the, on the end locations. <coughs> now there are some few points you can see. It's, the main reason is it's going to limit the number of query messages, which is going to help to Help helps the EHRP protocol to be more scalable and, st and st it provides some stability. Okay, and it reduces the CPU utilization, resource utilization. And this is more applicable in case of uh, hub and spoke topology where you have some frame delay or DM VPN kind of implementations where uh, you have a branch office and we want to ensure that if the branch office, uh, if the router lost is, let's say there are some other branches here and this is the best route and the head, head office lost the best route, it should not send out a query to the branch offices. And in that case, I can go to this branch office and I can configure stub routers. Now these stub routers will not be, uh, will not be sent a query messages. Okay. So the stub router will never uh, send a query packet to the stub router. The router will never send a query packet to the stub router. Now this is also going to help us in avoiding most of the stuck in active states. And it, it helps the EHRP to converge much faster than normal in case if, the, if there is any uh, best, best path failures. Now in order to configure the stop, there is one simple command. We just need to go to each and every router of this end locations. We need to simply say EHRP stop. Now EHRP stop is the only command which we, we can configure. But optionally, you have some parameters like we can either configure receive only now in case of receive only, if you configure any specific uh, router as a stub, let's say I'm going to configure this as receive only, in that case it will only receive the routes, but it will not send back any route advertisements. Whereas if you say connected option, probably it will only advertise the connected interfaces. And when you say static, if you have a static route configured on the router, it's going to only advertise the static route. Or you can have some summary routes also. If you want to advertise only the summary routes, then you can also advertise the summary routes. Now these are different options we can configure along with the stops. But most commonly, if you're not giving any of these options, these are all optional parameters. And if I don't use any, any optional parameters in that case, the default, it is going to advertise all the connected interfaces. And if you have any summary route, it's going to advertise that summary route. But by default, when you say stop, it will advertise its own connected interfaces. 
and but the only thing is the stub router will not be send a query re, query messages or query packets in case if there is any link failures now to verify these options probably you can get into my workbook in that workbook i have i have uh, documented some of the labs to see the practical behavior of this these are somewhat small small uh, labs so just you can go through with the workbook for a full detail on how how this stuff is going to work with with some different kinds of scenarios in my workbook